I also sent out a text to the conclave because I wanted to make sure that all of their questions have been asked. And uh, we did get one of our guys who wants you to answer this question. Can you ask him what sort of sentence Rod the Rat would get if he's found to be guilty of treason? If? How about when? (laughs) (laughs) Betsy, it is an honor to try to decode the Trump tweets, which have become Trump bombs. And they're getting bigger every day, especially after his UN speech. So that conclave member knows the answer to that question. He asked it simply to make sure that I would say that, of course, Rat Rodenstein is going to be given a sentence of death in his treasonous actions of a coup d'etat against a sitting president. But, but it's worse than that. You see, Rat Rodenstein cannot be taken into a military tr- uh, tribunal, but he can be tried as a military combatant, a domestic enemy against the state, against the United States of America. And he knows this. And so when it comes down to it, it's going to all be what sentence these people are given. And let's not forget and his... we do not want to go with a conspiracy, folks. We want to go with... In, so in a way, you're going to lose the impact of actually having the pleasure of seeing the, the portable gallows that Betsy's always showing on Truth News Headlines pull into D.C. and there'd just be a bunch of hangings. Why? Because these are lawyers. Rat Rodenstein is a very clever lawyer. And so is Robert Mueller. And don't forget his wife, Lisa Barsoomian. And she's got to be all wrapped up in this too. Who I've never hammered on because the, you know, there's a firewall between them and their bed. You know, Lisa Barsoomian, Barsoomian and and Rat Rodenstein. And so they never, ever speak. There's no way there could be any conflict of interest just because she has defended the very people that he is pri- trying to prosecute in this fake special investigation. He, uh, sh- They are so colluded with the Clintons and the Bushes and uh, Lisa Barsomian. I've never really gone into great detail about her, but she is as evil as anybody can get in D.C. She is the one who's chosen to go into the fake cases that are already set up with fake judges to make sure that the big D.C. politicians do not get prosecuted. And we do have a report that we wrote a while back on Lisa, and I will have that included in the link in the description box. Now, Rat Rodenstein has already laid the pathwork for him getting out of this uh, rat trap by saying that he didn't read the FISA court warrant that he signed, Title I. FISA warrant for Carter Page. Then the reason for that is the following. He's a lawyer. He had Comey sign it. See, Comey had to swear that Carter Page was absolutely 100% by the head, only the director of the FBI can sign this, both for national security letters, which were used by Peter Strzok, which have yet to come out, but someday will, to prove that we're right again, and for the Title I uh, warrant for... Carter Page. So Comey signed off of both of those. That's the reason Rat Rodenstein on the fifth round didn't even pay any attention to reading it, though that's the one that has the fake Michael Isakoff report that was used, basically, uh, there was a report by Christopher Steele that was used as an article to then substantiate the fourth FISA court request. And remember, as I've said all along, those are only used in court to protect themselves So when the truth comes out, we've already know the truth. We already know about Spygate. We already know about Stefan Halper. We already know about the setups. We already know about the framing. We know about all this. It's all come out in testimony in in court. You know, this is sworn testimony. And so we know this is all going on. So Rat Rodenstein is not military. Robert Mueller, he could, in fact, they could uh, simply have a military tribunal for him and others who they could simply, because of their long history in the military, simply hold them responsible because their security agreements go back to when they were in the military, which state that you are basically going to be tried under the Uniform Code of Military Justice in a military tribunal if you do the things that we have caught them doing. I do not know if Rat Rodenstein has ever signed those. So technically, I don't know that he will hang because he's a lawyer and he's one of the 500 who run the SES and the DOJ, and he's uh, as crooked as they can possibly be. And if he goes down, he can turn on all the rest. And the rest are the other 35 members of that cabal 
that we've uh, mentioned the names of so many times. Well, like many people say that that's perhaps the way that John McCain had his ending was really through a military tribunal. We just don't have any information on that. Do you have any thoughts about that? Because I do see it a lot out there. We know that John McCain's illness was fake. We know that his, because he kept changing the support on his leg day to day as he's going around in the wheelchair. He couldn't even remember what illness he was supposed to have or what part of his body was we supposed to be worked on. never saw a picture of him in the hospital or Not recuperating, one. anything. Have you ever seen a worst stitching job on somebody's face? Never in history, except maybe back in the Dark Ages. That was staged. That was the ugliest looking stitches which shouldn't have been in there after that operation because they don't even do that anymore. And he, why was he showing himself on the news again and again with those nasty scars? That was to convince you that he was ill. Why? Because he's gone down now. He would be the number one person because he was military who would go into a military tribunal for the crimes that he's committed. But he's committed so many crimes. Uh, we're not going to talk about the conspiracy for the coup d'etat. We could simply talk about his working with Oleg Deripaska during the election, after the election, and, and still, if John McCain is still alive, I don't know that. But I do know one thing. His illness was a fake. And that's very simple to see through. We also know that he was caught for receiving $11 million in the in the institute, the John McCain Institute, from foreign nations. He was caught for being uh, giving money to pay Christopher Steele for the dossier. He may have been the original money even before Fusion GPS. And by the way, it goes again to our credit that we said Fusion GPS was working on working for the Democratic National Committee long before April or June or July of 2016. Now they know for a fact those checks go back, as well as Christopher Steele's checks, go back to February of 2016, exactly as we said they did. Now, going on, why don't we go to the next tweet? Okay, well, those weren't tweets, but they were questions that needed to be asked. Uh, the Democrats are playing a high-level con game in their vicious effort to destroy a fine person. It is called the politics of destruction. Behind the scene, the Dems are laughing. Pray for Brett Kavanaugh and his family. Trump is so correct. The politics of destruction, what he's implying here is that they're destroying themselves by their politics. Because why? Behind the scenes, the Dems are laughing. Everybody knows they're laughing. Everybody knows it's a setup. Only a really stupid person couldn't see through this. It's worse than then it, it, they're liars. I like to take out uh, one of the letters and add another one and make them into demon rats because that's what they are. They're mob rule, socialism on steroids at this point with Bernie. Couldn't be socialist enough for the Democratic Party. He had to start his own socialist party. Supported directly by George Soros, by the way. Has anyone ever said that besides us? $2 billion to the Democratic National Committee, all filtered through the different states through that money laundering that Hillary had going, which we all know about. The Federal Election Commission has been informed about that over and over again. Nothing has been done. $84 million from the state of Maine alone. Donated through super PACs, through all the states, filtered to Hillary, and that money went straight to Bernie, too. So when we're talking about that, let's not forget that's George Soros. But they basically become fascists. Look at their fascist activities. Dianne Feinstein, who is now, we know, a communist agent, still in her seat in the Judiciary Committee, causing trouble at the 12th hour, at the last second of the 11th hour, with a fake letter in her hand that she wouldn't let out, that she's never let anybody see. And now you have people coming out in swarms, swearing that Brett Kavanaugh was running a drug and rape culture uh, in in the in his youth, and that it's just a, a horrible scene. If he had any dealings with anyone in high school, um, it seems like it was maybe directed to his relationship to his priest, who he seems to be very endeared to. If you watch the nomination that Trump gave, so I, I just it's a hundred and eighty degrees different from what it really is. Yes, and we told you from the beginning that he probably will not be confirmed. We told you that. We told you this scene would happen. We told you that the Dems. And the Republicans are all going to come out, pulling their hair out, setting themselves on fire, showing that they're idiots before the midterm. This was his plan. This is the mother of all bombs. It's the mother of all October surprises. It is the 
kangaroo court of the Judiciary Committee showing who the real rhinos are, the globalist rhinos that are not going to vote for Kavanaugh, not going to stand with the Republicans, showing who the fools in the Democratic Party are, you know, Kamala Harris and Cory Booker and Dianne Feinstein, the whole group of them, just that's in the Judiciary Committee. Wait till it gets out into the Senate. What we're already seeing, what these people say, they've already passed judgment without even hearing this woman or even knowing her. So this is the midterm bomb that's being dropped by Trump. Now, he's feeling really bad. As we told you, when he announced Brett Kavanaugh, we told you it was the only time we've ever seen him feeling bad. And we well, told you what he was feeling like bad about. To us. It looked like he was feeling bad. Why did we say it looked like he was feeling bad? Because he knew he was giving Kavanaugh up to the sharks. He knew that this was going to be an absolute carnival. A, what are they calling it now? A circus. A circus. This is a three-ring circus with complete with uh, a dozen clowns, elephants, and people on the high wire. So what is really being said here is he's saying pray for Brett Kavanaugh and his family because these Dems, just like Robert Mueller has done, who basically Robert Mueller is a weaponized Democrat against a sitting Republican president, who did he destroy? Oh, just like Brett Kavanaugh, they, Robert Mueller destroyed Sam Clovis. Carter Page, George Papadopoulos, Paul Manafort, Rick Gates, General Michael Flynn, Michael Cohen. And now they're going after our buddy, Roger Stone. And we hope to be able to uh, bring more news to you about that because these people have gone bankrupt and Roger Stone says he's going bankrupt because of the Robert Mueller attacks against him for simply responding to Guccifer 2.0 in a text message on the internet. This is what is really going on. It's the democratic way for political assassination. It's mob rule. It's a pack of wolves, folks. The next tweet. Consumer confidence hits an 18-year high, close to breaking the all-time record. A big jump from the last eight years. People are excited about the USA again. We are getting bigger and richer and stronger. Way more to go. Now, by excited, he means that all those countries, those 30-some countries looking at him at the UN, they were excited. They were excited to realize that he was being strong, saying that America is richer because they are not going to be able to vampirize America anymore, and that we're bigger because our economy is growing and we really don't need them. And we are basically going to say goodbye to the United Nations is what he was telling them. So, yeah, people all around the world are more excited about the USA because why? They're terrified of Trump. Because finally we have an honest president who speaks his mind and follows through on his word. Oh, my heavens, well, we haven't had that. I, I don't know. I can't remember a time we had that. That's the globalist leaders who are uh, terrified of him. But people around the world, citizens, because, you know, our audience is global and I hear from them. And they're so excited because this is they want to get involved in creating their na uh, their nations and their sovereign states, making them great again. Just as he said to do, Betsy, you're absolutely right. Why has the, the false song of globalism sung by George H.W. Bush, and by the way, thank you for all those who listened to the recent broadcasts who uh, have spread it to so many people. When Trump says consumer confidence, you might as well replace that with voter confidence, okay? Because he's talking about the midterms here, folks. Every single accolade he has on his presidential successes over the last two years is Basically, they basically are uh, the platform of the Republican Party. They are the planks. Every success he has. So when he says, you know, consumer confidence, it's an 18-year high, that's a plank of the Republican Party that's going to win and create a red tsunami because all of us are going to get out and vote because, as he said, we're voting for Trump. Now, what does this mean? It means that Trump not only is the greatest leader that the Republican Party has ever had, certainly in modern times, but it means that MAGA make America great again. After two years, we might as well just start using the 2020 slogan, which is uh, keep America great because we are already great in two years with him. We're the greatest we have been in modern times without any exaggeration. People said he exaggerated too much. Well, I guess an exaggerator gets exaggerated responses and results because look at the results they are exaggerated and these are not fake 
These are not the fake polls. These are not the fake federal numbers. These are not the numbers that President Obama would quote, which would be out of think tank tanks that were run by left-wing Democrats. No, this is the truth. So after two years, this is what we see. So much winning. Imagine the results that we're going to see after eight years of Trump in the White House. At that point, I will have to sit back and say, literally, there is just too, too much winning. And then he follows up with a tweet, jobless claims fell to their lowest level in 49 years. Pretty remarkable. The next tweet reads, Avenatti is a third-rate lawyer who is good at making false accusations, like he did on me and like he's now doing on Judge Brett Kavanaugh. He's just looking for attention and doesn't want people to look at his past record and relationships. A total low life. He is a low life. He is so disgusting. Now he, he says he's got groups of people who can prove that Brett Kavanaugh was running a drug and sex ring. He is such a, what would you call it, media whore. He is what you get when you have a lawyer and you take out the A.W. Liar. He is the huge liar. Look at his past record. He owes, what, between 10 to $20 million in past taxes that he is actually... He, he is um, being prosecuted for as we speak. Tax evasion. So that's what Trump is talking about, his past record, his relationships. This guy is working directly for David Brock, and he's getting a big share of the $350,000 that David Brock said he'd pay any whore who would come forward and say something bad about Trump. So Michael comes in and is the what do you call that? An ambulance chasing lawyer who is uh, now representing no, a whore? You know, if you're going to use the word whore, what Avenatti is, he's a whore's whore. Oh, he's a whore's whore. That's a very good point. But he hangs himself because he's been given enough rope to do so. This is a guy who a minute ago said he was going to run for president while owing 10 to 20 million in back taxes and is being sued. And any minute he's going to be in jail he's not going to be the president so he showed his dishonesty so overtly because why trump simply sat back and did nothing and let these people shoot themselves in their own foot whoa and then we go to a tweet like what is going on with china in this situation Trump tweets, China is actually placing propaganda ads in the Des Moines Register and other papers made to look like news. That's because we are beating them on trade, opening markets, and the farmers will make a fortune when this is over. Now that's election meddling. Not all the fake election meddling that the three different studies looked into and found RT and Sputnik. No, no, no. This is real, fake, manipulated meddling. And it's the second time it's happened. The first time is when China wouldn't take our soybeans. And so they put ads in the Cal all the California papers bashing Trump. California, they're so stupid, China. The Californians were paid huge amounts of money to supplement the loss that might be happening during these tariff wars. They're making more money than ever before. It doesn't matter how many ads you put in the paper. That shows the demented, totalitarian, communist, fascist view of President Xi, who thinks that he can manipulate Americans in that kind of pathetic fashion. This is election manipulation. It's illegal. It's by a foreign country. They need. We need to simply not do any more trade with them, and we need to simply put sanctions on them instead of having a tariff war where they think that they're going to make us have higher deficits each year with them. That's absurd. Well, Thomas, another thing too is, so we, we've heard about a uh, Russian election meddling for the last two years ad nauseum. And so now we're turning our attention to China and people probably could easier get behind Trump with the Chinese propaganda because he's got to eventually focus in on the, prop uh, on the election meddling that was done by the Privy Council in the United Kingdom. And people are so brainwashed here in America that they believe that uh, the United Kingdom government and monarchy is our friend and that we are really separate from them. And this is going to be um, a challenging job to do to waken people up to the, the real meddling and interference in our government is coming from the British. You're absolutely right, Betsy. Spygate happened because the British conducted an attack on us. That's the reason why 
Top officials called Trump from Britain to say, please do not declassify the documents that will prove that. So when is it going to happen? I think it's beginning to happen. And just like now, Trump calls them out for this manipulation, Chinese manipulation, meddling in the election. Oh, notice he caught them. He's going to put sanctions on them. And no one will even know what those sanctions are, but they will go back to the people who are responsible for that. Well, then the other thing, too, is if if the administration is looking at these propaganda ads from China, certainly they know about Optech software that is in all of our election machines. Yes, thank you, Jimmy Carter, you lying, stinking BCCI puppet who came out recently to attack Trump. You know, I thought you had at least a little sense to lay back because of the fact that you developed what is the number one manipulation of media in America, in Venezuela, with the United Nations and Lord Malik Brown, the program that has now basically turned into AVID and ISIS management, owned by Dianne Feinstein and her husband. So we know how it works, folks, and this is with China at this moment because Dianne Feinstein is directly connected to her. Notice that the first ads were ran in California. Hmm, Dianne Feinstein, California. And then I'm going to tell you point blank, this is an economic attack against our national security, and Donald Trump is, by putting this out on his Twitter account, he's basically told me that he is going to sanction the people he did that, and he's going after them, and he knows who they are, and he's not going to do it with a Robert Mueller investigation. So the spoiled... Chinese dictator, the globalist dictator who is now manipulating every country that they do business with. That would be, of course, China and President Xi is doing this. Um, All I can say is we need to arrest the domestic enemies of America who are helping China war against us and the U.S. economy. And those people would be Henry Kissinger, Eric Schmidt, Mark Zuckerberg, James Breyer, Joe Biden, John Kerry, IBM, etc., etc. They are now our enemies. They are warring against us economically and meddling in the election by supporting these Chinese actions. And you can bet your bottom dollar that they are all learning Mandarin right now. Remember, what is Mark Zuckerberg doing with his spare time? Dude Zuckerberg is learning Chinese Mandarin. Did you ever ask yourself why the most difficult language in the world would be attempted by one of the biggest idiots in the world? Because he's got to have a place to run when he's caught for all of his crimes. Well, we have two more tweets that are retweets that... uh, uh, address the United Nations speech that Trump gave yesterday. The first is from Newt Gingrich, who said, President Trump's United Nations speech today is a remarkable outline of the power of patriotism. And then Pete Hegseth said that this UN speech should be required viewing in American high schools. It's so true, Betsy. Now, but if it was required reading in American high schools, the liberal democratic teachers would absolutely blow a gasket. But I totally agree. That speech was one of the greatest speeches, which clearly shows that socialism, which is sold in every American public school today, socialism, folks, they're not teaching democracy, and they're not teaching a democratic republic. They are teaching socialism, okay? That is disturbing. It is illegal to teach anything political in a school. Did anybody know that? Did anybody remember that? But if you mention Trump, you'll get kicked out of the school or beat up early on in his campaign and in his presidency. Uh, But now, only social democratic virtue signaling is allowed in public schools. And so I'd have to say, yes, it should be studied, but it's going to have to require an educated person in there to explain what Trump was talking about because most of that was over the heads of people who believe that socialism is good, though they can't name one country that is socialist that is good. We could name a lot that are ultra disasters as he did in his speech. And I totally agree also with Newt Gingrich that it's a remarkable outline of the power of patriotism. It was a beautiful, beautiful call for patriotism for all nations and to basically dispel the global myth that there's such a thing as patriotism for globalism, because there isn't. Globalism is decentralized centralization into the hands of a small group of people who will become oligarchs, who will become fascists, and who will become much like Chinese President Xi. 
And eventually we get locked into a prison, literally on the planet where there's no way to leave. And we need to see decentralization everywhere. We need to see sovereign nations. And here in the United States, we need to get the power back to our individual states. No, I'm going to jump. He met with the prime minister of Japan, right? Yes, and Israel. So I'm going to say what I think happened there. The prime minister of Japan, what is he now? He is humble. He basically is a vassal of America. It wasn't long ago when we were terrified of the Japanese because they had taken over our manufacturing, both in our country and outside of our country. They'd taken over our economy, and they had more money than they knew what to do with, so they bought up everything in America. Where are they now? They are our humble partner, basically dependent upon us as a vassal. That is what is going to happen to China if you re-elect Trump for a second term. By the eighth year, China will become very much like Japan is now, and Taiwan will become free. And remember, China took the place of Japan because of Bill and Hillary Clinton moving in for their own greedy purposes to allow them in to become a most favored nation trading status and to join the World Trade Organization, which Trump smashed with a hammer in his speech at the UN. And so remember, Japan, China, Japan was China. Now they're humble. China will become like Japan. And South Korea now is taking over for China. But really, we have to remember that North Korea, if they can get out of the control of China could become the new Taiwan because Taiwan was actually the manufacturing center of America for all those years and we called it China and it wasn't true. And it still is a manufacturing center. That's the reason the largest Taiwanese tech company was brought over to America by Trump himself. And he's bringing the second, third, and fourth. So Taiwan is going to falter and fall. It will go to China and China will become second place to South Korea. And then North Korea will then probably create a union with South Korea so that they will become the major cheap manufacturers for us. And this, these are lessons to be learned from history. Now, when Netanyahu, that criminal, met with Trump, remember, Trump knows who he is. He knows he's a criminal. He knows that he's a lying, cheating warmonger, and that he's a Zionist. I think it was two days ago, Betsy, that I was ranting and raving about Woodrow Wilson and the secret deal, the the, the um, pike Sino agreement that was made between our representatives and British representatives to split up the Middle East into what would be countries that would serve the interests of Britain, America, and their friends. The Treaty of Versailles was being conducted in another room, but they were behind closed doors, literally, without any consideration for the people in those countries, slicing them up the way they wanted the pie sliced up. That is why Zionism came into existence. Zionism is not Jewish. Zionism is not Israel. Zionism is what is called, by that secret plan, the Greater Israel Project. Now, the Greater Israel Project is not necessarily Jewish. As a matter of fact, the original plan was written by British ambassadors, actually. Ah, the Brits again. Uh Uh-huh. And that's the reason, because they owned Israel, and they gave it away as a home to Zionism. Now, everybody says... Israel was created so that the Jews who had been persecuted would have a place to go after the diaspora and after the uh, the Holocaust. No, it was created as a home for Zionism. And Zionism's plan was to take over the entire Middle East. All the Middle East, all the way into Saudi Arabia and all the way into Iran. This has always been the plan. It's called the Greater Israel Zionist Plan. And it was laid out even in how many years it would take to accomplish these things. Netanyahu is a war hawk. And because he's a good war hawk, that's the reason he's elected by the Israeli people. Well, how do we know their elections aren't rigged too? Well, they are are rigged, and we actually paid uh, Obama. We just recently found out the exact amount of money that Obama, which he admits, 
he literally admitted this, speaking to the mainstream media, that he did interfere in the Israeli elections to stop Netanyahu from coming to power. Because Netanyahu is a war hawk, and that's the reason he's in power, because he can stomp his enemies. Well, why would Obama want to stop that? Because he wanted the war to happen. He wanted Damascus to be bombed by Hillary, which would start Armageddon, World War III, and it would basically create so much chaos that the power of OPEC would no longer rule, and that would bring down the dollar, and that was their intent. Their intent was to go to the International Monetary Fund's um, reserve currencies, and then the countries that have reserve currency have special drawing rights. Those are basically international. That is an international currency. Those are international dollars. So they wanted to knock it out of OPEC and the uh, basically oil dollar to the International Monetary Fund because China had got gotten into the International Monetary Fund and Russia was close to, all based upon economic lies, manipulation, gold manipulation, and fantastic lies about China somehow finding 8,000 tons of gold in a matter of about a year, and now it's been proven they didn't find any gold. So that's what that was about. This is Netanyahu is a war hawk, and what they talked about today, or when they met, was the following. He said, Who? sir... Netanyahu said, okay. sir, Mr. President, because he kisses his rear because he knows that Trump could squish him. He first said, thank you for calling out the Palestinian Authority and their stupid leader so that we don't even have to go into negotiations for peace because they won't come to the table because you said there has to be a two-state solution and you recognize Jerusalem as the capital city of Israel. Well, that is a genius move. Every president in my lifetime has attempted to create peace in Israel. But when they get to the table, they say, Palestinians say, we wish to kill all Israelis and there can be no Israel. And the Israels say, for every Israeli you kill, we will kill two Palestinians. So it cannot reach peace. Look at the war border the, the um, border war that's going on now, where they even construct the most homemade weapons to attack Israel. And Israel just sits there and shoots them when they please. How about the 30 missiles that were launched from Syria that were supplied by the money that Obama and then later John Kerry helped with that and Hillary gave to the Iranian regime, which then was given to Hezbollah and the Revolutionary Guard and they took over Iraq. Iran now controls Iraq. I guess nobody's noticed that. And they're controlling Syria. I guess nobody's noticed that either. They just put in what may be hundreds. We have seen in bank. We've seen banks of these missiles, same missiles as before, all bought and paid for by Obama through Iran from Russia. And then those missiles are coming in, and that's why Russia got involved there, so that they can go after Israel, because nothing would please Russia better than if Saudi Arabia, Iranian oil, came under huge constriction. They want that oil to end, and then their Kazakhstan oil, their Turk Turkmenistan liquid gas, all of their Nord Stream 1, Nord Stream 2, which could, which basically still does control Europe right now through Germany, which Trump called and Angela Merkel out again recently on, but basically, Russia would be very happy if the oil in the Middle East just dried up because that would make them twice as rich as they are with the oil. And they have unlimited amounts of oil and well, uranium. why don't we look at other energy? Like, I keep saying, why don't we look at thorium? And then we won't have to be so dependent on the, this oil because really oil and all of this chasing the gas and the oil and the energy is what is behind all of our wars. If we had free and abundant energy, which we have the technology to provide humanity right now, we wouldn't have this. Yes, and as time moves on, the really smart, rich people already know what I'm about to tell you. Oil's day is over. It's frozen methane in the Antarctica that they're going after. As soon as they figure out a way to tap frozen methane at the bottom of the ocean, it is like a thousand times more pro proliferate in uh, the Earth's crust as Why the go all the oil way down there when you can get thorium right here in the United States, mine it, 
and put it in these, uh, what did they put them right there in the... Um, the Galt reactors, yes. yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was going to go there next, okay. that the uranium should all end. That's the reason Russia got in on the tail end of Britain's control of uranium here in America. That's what the Uranium, uranium One deal is all about. And they know that it's coming to an end, so they're all fighting to the death to keep it still intact and to keep those rat lines of money flowing through oil and through uranium. But they all know that thorium is as commonplace as anything on the face of the earth and that you don't need to create plutonium plutonium except to create bombs. You can retrofit every single nuclear reactor with thorium right now for a very small cost. You can actually use those plants to then eat the poisonous yeah. nuclear waste that we have. It, the, the, the galt plants, uh, the, the geothermic atmospheric li- liquid thorium plants, eat, eat the l- nuclear poisons. There will be no more nuclear poisons if we go to galt. There will be no more oil problems if we go to liquid uh, excuse me, frozen methane, or if we simply go to hydrogen engines, which has, have been demonstrated thousands of times, and we have point, pointed that out. We've shown you places you can even buy these things and retrofit your current car with a hydrogen fuel system, which will then make your system either completely more efficient, or you can go strictly to hydrogen. So, And they're happening in J- uh, Japan and Germany, these cars, and they will someday win the mainstream media stops telling us that oil is the only thing we have well, that's to create the energy. Well, propaganda media, and it's run by the bankers. And, of course, the bankers want oil to continue to rule because that's where they make their money. So Hezbollah has given these missiles to Syria. I don't know why they haven't fired them, but that's what the recent attacks were, where they got confused, and then they actually shot a Syrian... Uh, um, they shot the Syrians shot a Russian plane out of the air and killed 15 Russians. That was because Israel was sizing up these missiles and getting ready to attack them. And because of this, Russia has now sold new defense missiles to Syria, a huge amount of these, and they're putting them all around to protect these banks of missiles which can reach Israel and have reached Israel. And Israel used you know their defense system to shoot most of these down. But the point is, it's building up, and Netanyahu is the only person who can stand against it. He is a ruthless, ruthless warrior who's doing a very great job defending Israel, but he's also a Zionist, and he doesn't really care about Israel. That's the reason he ripped them off with those oil deals which he and his wife were involved in. He doesn't really care 